This car has no engine, no petrol tank, no tailpipes, which equals to zero emission. And it is as silent as a mouse. Now, while all of that is true, what is also true is range anxiety. If you think this car looks just like another C-segment hatchback out there, I don't blame you. Because I think this is exactly what Nissan has intended, to make a fully electric car mainstream, so that it's able to fit into the rest of the market. Let me introduce to you the new fully electric Nissan LEAF. Now to put it simply, most of the cars that you currently see on the road uses a combustion engine with petrol to power up the car. There is an engine plus petrol equals go. Now for an electric car, there is no longer a physical engine. It is replaced by an electric motor that does not require petrol, but instead uses battery packs to power up the car. So an electric car has an electric motor plus battery packs equals go. Now in a nutshell, the aim of an electric car is to not be dependent on petrol, which reduces carbon emission and less air pollution, giving you a cleaner and greener environment. Now the second generation Nissan Leaf does not look anything like the first generation. The first generation has a more radical and eccentric design cue. Whereas for the second generation, it looks a little bit too conservative for my liking. Perhaps it could look a little bit more fun and funkier, like the Tesla Cybertruck or the Honda e. Now at the front, you get this V-motion design grille, which is in line with Nissan's design language. Now the most futuristic thing you can probably find right in front of the car is actually this blue diamond cut grille, which is also where the autonomous emergency braking system is located. Other than that, you get a boomerang LED daytime running lights, two-tone floating roof, 17-inch diamond cut alloy rims, and the back, I really like the black panel that extends up to the roof. The rear headlights has this really sleek L-shaped design that you probably could only see at a 45 degree angle. Where, Dom? Not here, no? Not here, Charles. Yeah. Andama. This car is also built with better aerodynamics in mind, such as aerodynamic spoiler, rear diffuser, aerodynamics underbody panels, and wind diffusing side mirrors. All of that to give you less drag, in return, better driving range. The charging ports are located right in front of the car. You get a Type 1 AC charger that charges at 6.6 kW and takes up to 7 hours for a full charge. Right beside it is the fast charger, the Chademo charger that charges at 50 kW and takes an hour for a full charge. Now if you come in here hoping to find something different, I'm afraid you will be disappointed. The interior of this car is rather plain and predictable. Though I wish Nissan would be a bit more ambitious. Now first thing you'll notice when you're in the car are all these little small blue touches in the car such as the blue stitching on the steering wheel, the blue stitching on the side door and also stitching on the Alcantara leather seat. But what I like the most is actually this palm shifter. This palm shifter was brought forward from the first generation LEAF and it's also the only thing that shouts electric vehicle inside the car. Driver's side, you get a 7-inch information display on the left and an analog speedometer on the right. Information display will show you a bunch of information such as battery temperature, battery capacity, charge time, but what you realise is you spend most of your time looking at this screen which tells you your range and also the battery percentage left for your drive. Now on the centre, you get a 5-inch non-touchscreen infotainment display. Unfortunately, it does not support Apple CarPlay nor Android Auto. Right below it, you get a climate control and also a USB port and two bum bum heaters and a 12-volt socket. Now, there isn't many storage spaces available in this car. You get bottle holders on the side of each door, a cubby holder here, two cup holders here, and a rather small storage space right here. 
Now the sitting position is really nice and comfortable but what you realise is you're sitting slightly taller than usual. It's like as if you're sitting on a compact SUV and it gives you a really good front view though. In terms of steering adjustment, you are able to adjust the height of the steering. However, you can't adjust the back and forth of the steering. Now that's not an issue because you can always adjust your seats. Now at the back, you also sit a lot taller and you get a clear front view. The seats are very comfortable and spongy. You get plenty of leg and head room. Unfortunately, you don't get a centre console, but somehow Nissan still retains the centre tunnel despite not having the exhaust pipe or the drive shaft running through at the bottom. Now all these 24 modules are seated at the bottom of this car, weighing a massive 300 kg. This also helps with weight distribution, cooling down the car, giving it a lower centre of gravity when driving around the corners. Now let's talk about the boot. The opening is slightly narrow and you don't get a flat entry. However, you do get a total of 495 litres of space. And if the seats are folded down, you get a total of 1,175 litres of space. That's pretty decent. Now before we get into the nitty gritty of the driving experience, let me just story you guys on the first impression when I first got my hands on this Nissan Leaf. Because first impression matters, right? And this is how it went. I got the keys and I was eager to test out the car. I start the engine, nothing was happening. Oh wait, this car has no engine, that's why it's so quiet. I soon realised how fun this car was with its instantaneous power. Then I noticed the battery level going down. Fast. I had my first moment of range anxiety, which put me in a frantic search to find the nearest charging station. Oh wait, tomorrow is a public holiday and most charging stations are closed! Dom, I got power bank, you want? Now this car has a 110 kilowatt electric motor that outputs 147 brake horsepower and 320 newton meters of torque through a single speed transmission. Yes, this car only has one gear. Top speed at 155 kilometers per hour and 0 to 100 in 7.9 seconds. The electric motor is powered by a 40 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery that is stored under the car. Now first thing you notice is this car drives really quiet. All you hear is that high pitch but yet subtle electric note that is so pleasing to the ear. Like this, here. And it is so quiet that you can't help but notice other things such as the suspension giving you a little bit too much feedback through uneven surfaces and potholes and the steering feels a little light, too much free play. I was hoping to find a sports mode that I could engage in so that I could get a better grip on the steering. But other than that, the suspension is soft and it absorbs bumps very well and this car is pleasantly fun to drive. Now the power delivery of this car is amazing. You have instantaneous power at your disposal with no effort. Gently step on the accelerator and it just pulls you away man. This is so fun. No other combustion engine gives you this kind of power and torque except an electric powered engine. So I was driving this car around corners and bends and I do feel the body roll but yet at the same time I feel that this car is really planted so it got me curious and wonder how heavy is this car. So just to give you a comparison, most C-segment cars curb weight weighs around 1000 to 1100 kg but this car weighs a massive 1500 kg. It is as heavy as a D-segment car. No wonder it felt so planted around the bends and corners. Now let's address the elephant in the room. On paper, Nissan claims that with their 40 kilowatt hour battery, you can achieve a range of 311 km. However, when I was charging this car the other day, the maximum range that I could achieve is only 257 km. Where did the other 60 km went to? 
Now, factor in my heavy right foot, I would say realistically, I would probably only get maybe slightly under 220 km on a full charge. So yeah, take the numbers with a pinch of salt. Now, if you can't install a wall box charger at home because you're living in an apartment or your house does not support three-phase wiring, I plead with you, forget about this car. It doesn't make sense even if there are plenty of free charging stations around. Now, it may look and sound all fun and dandy at first, but you'll be constantly living under the mercy of the unknown, such as the charging bay does not work, is closed on public holiday or it's occupied by inconsiderate college students you're better off getting a grab just saying now i want to hear another nissan's claim you only need to pay 20 ringgit for a full charge so what that means is you get 250 km of range for only 20 ringgit now that's a win for me What's not a win for me are the charging options. Yes, I know I'm still yapping on this charging facility nonsense, but you know, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I got to be real with you guys. Essentially, there are only three options available. One, it's either you have a wall box at home to charge, or second option would be selected Nissan centers, which provide charging facilities. And lastly, the handful of independent fast charging stations around Klang Valley, such as Nichicon in Bangi, ABB in Subang, Vision Motorsports in Kayu Ara. And that's about it, guys. Now, the EV charger at the shopping mall or the petrol station will not work with this Nissan Leaf because it uses a different charging port. Unless you have a converter that can convert from a Type 1 to a Type 2 charger. Now, safety-wise, this car comes with six airbags, heel start assist, vehicle dynamic control, anti-lock braking system, and also a 360-degree camera around view. So what is an e-pedal? It's a new technology created by Nissan that allows you to drive a car entirely on one pedal. So let me show you how the e-pedal works. I'm currently on the throttle gently as I accelerate and cruise through the highway. But as I ease off on the pedal, you can sense that the car is slowing down. And if you lift off entirely, the car will come to an abrupt stop, which you don't want that to happen. When you first try out the e-pedal, it will probably take you a while to get used to it. But after a while, you feel like it's second nature. Now, this e-pedal can be quite addictive. I catch myself a couple of times getting a bit excited when I'm going through bumper to bumper traffic or when I'm downhill because that gives me a regenerative power to the battery. And I keep looking at the range and the battery percentage hoping that it will increase. But unfortunately, I don't think it works that way. Instead of increasing in range, what it does is it helps me to hold charge a lot longer. So meaning if I am left with 75 km on a e-pedal, it will hold at 75 km for longer as opposed to me not being on an e-pedal. While there is no denying that the future of the automotive industry is gearing towards electric vehicles, a technology that is not dependent on fuel, has zero emission, has lower cost of maintenance, and outputs instantaneous power like no other. Who doesn't like that? It is simply just a more efficient way of driving around. Now, of course, this will not go down well with the car enthusiasts they will probably have issues of letting go of the idea of a mechanically powered combustion engine, manual shifters and so on. Whereas well, the saying goes, if you don't adapt and adopt, you will likely be facing out somewhere down the road. I think Nissan is quietly preparing themselves for the time when fully electric vehicle takes on mass adoption, which by then they will be more than ready to be the market leader, if not already, in EVs of the future. Now, if you're a tree hugger and likes the novelty of owning an electric vehicle and has no problem setting up the wallbox charger at home 
and have a somewhat fixed daily travel routine and most importantly if you have spare cash to spend why not consider turning a new leaf? Got it? With the current tax exemption, this car is priced at 181,263 ringgit with 3 years or 60,000 km free service, 3 years or 100,000 km vehicle warranty and 8 years or 160,000 km warranty on the battery. If owning a car is not your thing, Nissan is also offering their subscription program for the Nissan Leaf at 2,500 ringgit a month on a 3-year contract. For more information on the Nissan Leaf, please log on to autobus.my. Hey Siri, what is range anxiety? Range anxiety is the fear that a vehicle has insufficient range to reach its destination and would thus strand the vehicle's occupants. Would you like to hear more? Sure. Now that's all from me for today. I'm just kidding. <laughs>